Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the delightful musical hit, Mary, starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest from the Metropolitan Opera, Dorothy Kirsten. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another memorable musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Martin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Say, Dorothy Kirsten, do you remember the 20s? (laughs) Ah, the 20s. Yes, sirree, the 20s. The era of the exclamation point. The days of Vilma Banky and boop boop pee doop It was the heyday of the dare and the age of adoration. Of Lindy and Babe Ruth and Valentino. And more than anything, it was the era of the good time. And if you walk down Broadway to the Knickerbocker Theater on the night of October 18th, 1920, you would have seen in bright lights... George M. Cohan presents Mary by Frank Mandel, Otto Harbach, and Louis Hirsch. Curtain going up. around with that toy. Oh, now, Mom, Mom, it's no toy. It's, well, it's a practical working model of the perfect little dream house. What's this? Hey, hey, hey. Be careful, Mom. You'll break off my front porch. Here, have a peek through the front window. You see, Mom, it's just a long nest, cozy with charm, like a down on a farm. Hey, look at this. A veranda with some sort of friggin' bar. Then a kitchen where some rambler roses twine. Now look in the side window. There's a small room, a tea set of blue. Best. Room, dream room for two Better than a palace with a gilded door Is a love nest You can call home Well, you never find a modern girl that would live in a house as tiny as this. Well, maybe not. But maybe, yes. You don't have to work so hard on these things, dear. Well, now, look, Mom, I, I don't want to live on the money Dad left us. I want a career of my own. And if I can build houses like this model and make a lot of other people happy, why, well, then I'll be happy, too. Well, finish it up, but it's just foolishness to me. Hello, Jack. Mary, I I didn't even see you. (laughs) That's the first requirement of a social secretary. Well, now, that's very sensible. (laughs) As a matter of fact, I never knew a girl named Mary who wasn't sensible. (laughs) Maybe I'm the exception. Well, I doubt it. I doubt it. You know, I can't figure out whether it's the girl that makes the name or the name that makes the girl. (laughs) Then I'm glad my name's not Euphronia or Anastasia. (laughs) Well, I'm glad, too. How's your house coming? Well, look at my model. Oh, it's a wonderful house. Who lives in it? Mr. and Mrs. Smith. 
Very nice of you to ask us in, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Oh, they're sorry they can't ask you to stay. There's no guest room. <laughs> it's the nicest house I've ever seen. Mary, do you think the people out in Kansas would like it? Oh, yes. Remember that summer I visited your folks out there? How could I forget it? Do you really like Kansas? Did I? How oh, I long for the simple song of that dear old Kansas farm. The drove of bees in the locust trees and the cowbell's wild alarm. The pigeons coo and the wild hoo of the youngsters out at play. The windmills thump and the creaking pump help to swell the rum. Out on that old farm in Kansas, I love every sound. Melodic romances in all things I found. The roosters and chickens, the geese and the ducks, all raising the dickens with tackles and rocks. And then the cows and their mooing, the calves with their ball. The holler, the looing, the piggies and all. A symphonic poem of infinite charm Was life on that old Kansas farm Mmm, smell that air Yeah, look at that sunrise Every sound and smell, gee, it's wonderful Out on that old farm in Kansas I love every song Melodic romances in all things I call The roosters and chickens, the geese and the ducks all raising the dickens with cackles and clucks And then the cows with their mooing The cows with their ball The hollabalooing The piggies and all A symphonic poem of infinite joy Was life on that old Kansas farm Yes, sirree, Kansas is a good place to grow anything Even presidents uh, Jack, where are you? I'm coming, Mom See you later, Mary. Bye. Golly, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I wish I could live in a house like yours. If he were in it, too, I'd do anything he wanted. If he wanted me to laugh, I'd laugh. If he wanted me to cry, I'd cry. Anything you want to do, dear, that's the thing I want to do. When you feel like feeling blue, dear, I'll be melancholy too. When you feel like feeling gay, dear, all you have to do is say, dear, that you'd like to have me happy and snappy for you. I will be your other self, dear. All your wishes shall be mine When you want me on the shelf, dear That is where I will recline I will try to get your view, dear Anything you want to do, dear That's the thing that I will do For you but he's not in love with me. So there's not much chance that a girl from Kansas will ever be as happy as you are, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Your money is all gone. What did you say, Mr. Keith? One of the holding companies went bankrupt. It's not possible. What kind of an executor are you? Well, now, Mother, don't worry a bit. I I'll help you. Oh, with what, Jack? With my houses. Oh, don't be silly. Nobody will ever buy those. I have one suggestion. If Jack happened to marry somebody wealthy... Mother, I will not marry for money. Oh, dear. Now, don't worry. I I'll figure out something. He can be so stubborn. If I only had a daughter. Daughters always do what their mothers ask them to do. How about that uh, social secretary of yours? Mary? Of course. Oh, Mary. Uh, would you come in here, dear? Did you want me, Mrs. Keene? Uh, tell me, Mary. If I were in trouble, would you do something to help me? 
Something? I'd do anything. Good. That's my girl. Now, we'll dress her up, pass her off as your long-lost niece, and put her into society. What for? To get you married, of course. To somebody rich. Then you could look after Mrs. Keene. She's lost all her money. Jack, too? Jack, too. If I do this, would it... Would it help Jack continue his work? Building his houses and all? I suppose so. Well... Then I'll do it. Mary, I've come to say goodbye. Where are you going, Jack? Oh, somewhere where I can take a crack at building these houses. Like this one, where Mr. and Mrs. Smith live. Yes. And I want you to keep this model while I'm gone, Mary. Meanwhile, I'm going to try to find a place where people would like to live in houses like this. Well, I'd like to. And I'm from Kansas. Why not there? Kansas? Why, Mary, that's an inspiration. The new towns are springing up all night. A lot of young gals are marrying a lot of young guys. <laughs> and they all need houses. This kind of house. Mary, you solved their problem and mine. Many builders there have been since the world began. Alice Cottage Mansion They have built four some were small and some were tall, long or wide or long. But the best one of them all, Jack built long ago, was built in bygone days. Yet millions sing its praise. Just a Like the dawn rest down on the farm Over and over with some sort of clinging vine Then a kitchen where some rambler roses twine Then a small room, a tea set of blue I'm going to Kansas, and maybe someday you'll see on every hillside and in every valley the house that Jack built, <laughs> with no Jack in his pocket. I'm going to Kansas, for Kansas I'm bound. I'm going to Kansas, where good things are found, where all life is sunny and efforts are crowned, where regular money comes out of the ground with all your frivolous dances and pink teas I'm through. I'm looking for chances to dare and to do Way out there in Kansas where golden days shine It's Kansas, old Kansas for mine Goodbye, goodbye everybody Goodbye, giant killer Tell him to come back soon Mr. and Mrs. Smith his long last dream room for two Better than a palace with a gilded door Is a love mast you can call home 
return in a moment for Act Two of Mary. What friendly, familiar sound comes to your mind when you think of the railroads that serve your community? Is it something like this? Yes, when you think about your railroads, you think first of the tremendous job of transportation they do. And that, of course, is their main job, providing the basic transportation your community and America need and must have. But transportation service isn't the only way in which the railroads contribute to your community. For example, do you know what important part the railroads play in making these sounds possible? Why, those are the sounds of a school bell and fire engine, aren't they? Right, and railroad tax money helps provide those services for you. Other railroad taxes go to help protect the health of your community, to help provide police protection, and to help build and maintain your public roads and streets. Now listen to these sounds. They're also a symbol of what your railroads mean to your community. Those sound like cash registers ringing to me. That's just what they are. They represent the money that enriches your community from wages paid to the railroad men and women who live and shop in your community. And they stand for money spent in your community for fuel, supplies, and materials needed by your railroads. Yes, in many ways, every individual railroad is a hometown partner of each one of the communities it serves, and a good friend and neighbor to every individual living and working in that community. Now, here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Mary, starring Gordon McRae as Jack and Dorothy Kirsten as Mary. Well, I went out to Kansas, and Mary stayed in Long Island to become the most sought after debutante of the 20s. Mary, that's with me. Please, one at a time. I don't understand all this attention. After all, I'm not a girl that you'd call stately. I'm not the kind that walks sedately. You're not the haughty kind. No, not the naughty kind. Who is some fella's heart is always playing. I'm not the girl that you'd call queenly. Who floats her way through life serenely. You're not a smarty girl. I'm just a hearty girl. Who always has a lot of fellows saying Mary. I simply ought to marry. What shall I do? Mary. I've simply got to marry someone like you. He must be tender and true. And just as slender as you. He must be true. But then, of course, I know there's Mary Another girl who has your manner and poise Mary Another girl who has your way with the boys You say my style is so neat You think my smile is so sweet You never knew such eyes of heavenly blue So, darling Mary I simply gotta marry you Mary, you're not listening. I am. Oh, I am. Then why are you staring out the window like that? It's funny, but I've been waiting for, well, for one special person to say. Mary, I simply ought to marry. What shall I do? Mary, I've simply got to marry someone like you. Oh, yes. He must be tender and true. And just as slender as you, she must be truthful all through. And just as youthful as you, but then of course I know there's Nary, another girl who has your manner and poise. Nary, another girl who has your way with the boys. There's none whose style is so neat. 
whose livid smile is so sweet. Who ever knew such eyes of heavenly blue? So, darling, Mary, I've simply got to marry you. Now, all of you, forgive me, please. I want to walk in the garden. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I hope you don't mind my sharing Jack's little house with some bluebirds. Oh, there's only one. What's the matter? Are you waiting for another bird to fly back home? Well, so am I. Lonely little bird. Lonely little bird. Does your mate make you wait? Eat your call on Flocks come fluttering nigh. Then they go sailing by. But the one you love the best keeps on flying, though you're sighing, hoping he'll come home to rest. Out in Kansas, Mother. I know that, but, but, but what's happened? How did your houses turn out? Terrible. I bought a piece of ground, set up one of my houses, and dug a well. Well? Well, I struck oil. Oil? Oh, you poor boy! Oh, well, Mother, let me tell you about digging for oil. It's great. <laughs> well, it's really wonderful. Way out west, neat the burning sky. Way out west, where the oil fields lie. Night and day you hear men cry Deeper, let's dig a deeper All day long you can hear the pling Pling, pling, pling of the drills that cling Clink as the black holes ever sing Deeper, forever deeper And up and down as the sharp will swing this is the song that the oil men sing. Deeper, deeper, going deeper, down, down, down into the ground. Crashing through a thousand feet of soil, smashing walls that hide the inky oil. We'll keep her, keep her going deeper, down. China, we are bound. There may be we'll lose the darn old drill, but darn her, we'll go deeper still. Deeper, deeper, going deeper. Down, down, down into the ground. Crashing through a thousand feet of soil. Smashing walls that hide the inky oil. We'll Going deeper Down for China We are bound There may be We'll lose the darn old drill But darn We'll go Deeper still Mom You know how much I've been offered for my land in Kansas? How much? Six million dollars Six million? 
I turn it down. Oh, Jack, I'm going to faint. Oh, no, Mom, I can get 60 million for it. Oh, Jack, I, I always knew you were the brainy one in this family. Uh, oh, my goodness. Now I don't have to get Mary married off to a rich man. Oh, yes, you do. I've got that rich man all picked out for her. Where is she? Out in the garden. Mary! Mary, where are you? Jack! Oh, Jack, you've come home. Yeah, I'm home. And I brought home a rich man for you to marry, too. A rich man? Who? Me. Oh, I think I'd like that. If you'll promise me one thing. Anything. That you'll keep building houses like the one Mr. and Mrs. Smith live in. Oh, on every hillside and in every valley. And you know something? The first one's going to be for us. Yes, sir. Then a small room, a tea set of blue. Dorothy Kirsten will be back in just a moment. And our thanks to Nora Marlowe, Tom Tully, and to our entire company. Mary, with book and lyrics by Otto Harbach and Frank Mandel, and music by Lewis Hirsch, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? What do your railroads mean to your community? Actually, they're much more than a safe, comfortable, convenient way to get from here to there. They're much more even than part of the nation's basic transportation system, moving more tons of freight more miles than all other forms of transportation combined. Fundamentally, they're independent local businesses deeply rooted in the communities they serve, active in local affairs, active taxpayers and purchasers of the things your town sells. They aim always to be good neighbors and good citizens. Thank you, Marvin. And now, folks, here again is our lovely guest, Miss Dorothy Kirsten. Thank you, Gordon. It was great fun reviving this charming hit of the 20s. Well, as the saying goes, Dorothy, I've been rich, I've been poor. Mm, better rich. <laughs> Anyhow, you were a wonderful Mary, Dorothy, and it's no surprise that every man in the company wanted to marry you. <laughs> what girl are you running after next week, Gordon? You. Well, great. And here's a sample <laughs> of the music. <laughs> oh, what a night, what a day, what sight. Wine and romance, in a heart, in a mind. Oh, da, da, da. Yep, <laughs> Johann Strauss's great Rosalinda. Wouldn't miss it. See you next Monday. Night, Gordon. Good night, Dorothy. All aboard. Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, and Rosalinda, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying goodbye. Mary was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae may soon be seen co-starring in By the Light of the Silvery Moon in Technicolor. Our choir was under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music was prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Until next week, this is Marvin Miller saying good night for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Tonight, the voice of Firestone features you.